In this special edition of the podcast, we're going to take a look at eBay's second quarter business results, UPS and the Teamsters avert a strike, and the post office ends a service guarantee to Alaska and Hawaii. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to a special midweek edition of the Galaxy CDs, Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. My name is Ryan, and I'm coming to you today with this special edition because there's some kind of breaking news that's going on. eBay announced their uh, second quarter business results. There's some stuff going on with the post office and with UPS, so I thought these things warranted a quick midweek update. So let's get stuck right in to some reselling news. News Updates. We're going to start with eBay and their second quarter results. Uh, This article appeared on eSeller 365. There are like articles probably in a lot of other places as well, but I did want to go over it uh, for you who uh, have told me that you rely on me. For your reselling news, eBay has released their second quarter earnings results and the stock has dropped despite positive metrics. eBay released their financial results for the second quarter, which ended on June 30th with a company claiming it's another result beyond expectations. In Q2, we exceeded expectations on all key metrics while investing in sustainable growth, said their CEO three years ago. I set out I set our ambition of becoming the best global marketplace to buy and sell through a tech-led reimagination. Now we are raising the bar for innovation and have evolved our vision to reinvent the future of e-commerce for enthusiasts only at eBay. This work is already producing compelling results, and we are confident the sharper focus will deliver long-term returns to our shareholders. Again, not to get too editorial, but they're not talking about their customers. They're not talking about their sellers. They're talking about their shareholders (laughs) Uh, in case there's ever any doubt about where eBay or any of these sites, to be fair, where their priorities lie. They're trying to deliver results for their shareholders. So just don't ever forget that, my friends. Uh, Steve Priest, the chief financial officer over at eBay, also expressed his satisfaction with the company's performance in Q2, highlighting that their gross merchandise volume, GMV, revenue and earnings per share surpassed expectations. That does not, however, mean that they were all better, as we'll get into here in a minute. Key financial highlights for the second quarter included revenue amounted to $2.5 billion, which represented a 5% increase on an as-reported basis and a 6% increase on a foreign exchange neutral basis. So they did have a revenue increase, which was good. Gross merchandise volume totaled $18.2 billion which was a decline of 2% on an as-reported basis and 1% on the foreign exchange neutral basis. Active buyer numbers, they said, stayed steady at $131 million, excluding a couple of other sites that they own, marking the first time in many quarters that the core business didn't shrink. I did see another article on another site which said that there was a slight loss in active buyers, from 132 million to 131 million. So it's it's close or slightly down from previous. It's still not anywhere near what it was in its heyday, but at least they're not bleeding active buyers at this particular point. They go on to say, furthermore, eBay demonstrated its strong financial position by generating $605 million of operating cash flow and $492 million of free cash flow from continuing operations during the quarter. They also displayed its commitment to, again, shareholder value by returning $383 million, which included $250 million in share repurchases or buybacks and $133 million paid in cash dividends. Overall, eBay said its its second quarter performance reflects the company's resilience and successful execution of its growth strategies. There are, however, concerns on the horizon. It's why the stock is dropping in after hours trading. Uh, This article again points out, and I will of course link to all this in the show notes and the video description below. It says the stock is under pressure in after hours trading as projected earnings in the current quarter, Q3, narrowly missed analyst estimates, suggesting the company's turnaround strategy may be slower than expected despite its glowing claims. Now, what this is essentially referring to is the Wall Street 
poobahs, the experts in this thing, had a an expectation for what eBay was going to project for third quarter. And what eBay has in turn actually projected is slightly less than those estimates, which of course has caused the stock to drop. So even though the second quarter financial results were actually pretty good, eBay stock is dropping in after hours trading. There were some revenue uh, highlights, some business highlights, revenue initiatives. Uh, This one I found really interesting. eBay achieved substantial growth in its first party advertising products, primarily driven by promoted listings, which generated $341 million in revenue during the second quarter alone. This represents a remarkable increase of 47% on an as-reported basis or 49% on the foreign exchange neutral basis. That is enormous. And we've ta- I've talked a lot about promoted listings on this show over the last few months because A, I'm using them, and B, one of the things that I've noticed over the time that I've been using is that in the kind of dynamic rate that eBay recommends, that rate has steadily increased from uh, at the time I started doing promoted listings, I started mine at a flat 5%. And the recommended range kind of at the time was like 6 to 7.5%. As of today, it was 105 to 12%. As I mentioned in a previous episode, I know some of that is actually being driven by what sellers are actually putting in for their rates. But the fact that eBay continues to suggest higher and higher rates inspires more sellers to use a higher and higher rate. And as you can see from this report, It is generating a significant amount of revenue for eBay. The company's overall advertising offerings yielded revenue over $367 million in the second quarter, which accounted for approximately 2% of their total gross merchandise volume. So 2% of their, what essentially is their gross sales is extra advertising money from sellers fascinating and it's why they are pushing it so hard because it's becoming you say two percent probably isn't a significant portion but a couple of years ago that number would have been zero (laughs) because they didn't really have promoted listings and an advertising plan so this is a huge huge profit opportunity for them and there's essentially no cost involved to them so it is almost all profit Uh, The article goes on, and I won't go into all this, talking about uh, the other things that eBay has continued to try to grow, their authenticity guarantee, their live commerce streaming experience on iOS, their diversity, equity, and inclusion report program, and so on. If you want to read more, again, there will be a link in the show notes in the video description below, but the, the, the long and short of it is eBay exceeded probably their own internal expectations probably just barely met analyst expectations for this quarter, but then projected lower than expected results for the third quarter and the stock is going down. You can let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments below what your thoughts are on this, uh, particularly on the uh, promoted listings and how much money eBay is generating from that. That is big, big dollars. Uh, I posted this yesterday or the day before. I don't, the days all run together. <laughs> uh, I think it was yesterday uh, on my Instagram account uh, at Galaxy CDs Rocks. If you're not following me over there, the UPS and Teamsters have reached a tentative five year deal. UPS has successfully reached a tentative agreement with the Teamsters Union, effectively preventing a potential disruptive nationwide strike that could have had severe implications for online businesses as the and the economy as a whole. The strike was scheduled to go into effect, I believe, either July 31st or August 1st. That has at least temporarily been averted. The deal encompasses several essential benefits, including higher wages for workers and the implementation of air conditioning and delivery trucks, a longstanding demand of the union members. Uh, rank and file UPS Teamsters sacrificed everything to get this country through a pandemic and enabled UPS to reap record setting profits. Teamster labor moves America, said Teamsters General President Sean O'Brien. The union went into this fight committed to winning for our members. We demanded the best contract in the history of UPS and we got it. He said UPS has put 30 billion dollars in new money on the table as a direct result of these negotiations. We've changed the game, battling it out day and night to make sure our members won an agreement that pays strong wages, rewards their labor, and doesn't require a single concession. 
This contract sets a new standard in the labor movement and raises the bar for all workers. Uh, among some of the highlights, historic wage increases, existing full and part-time UPS Teamsters will get $2.75 more per hour in 2023 and $7.50 more per hour over the length of the contract, which again is five years. Existing part-timers will be raised up to no less than $21 per hour immediately, and part-time seniority workers earning more under market rate adjustment would still receive all general wage increases. That was one of the big pushes for this UPS had part-time workers earning as little as $16 an hour. So on top of all the other raises that are in place here, those folks are going to go uh, directly to $21 an hour. Pretty nice. General wage increases for part-time workers will be double the amount obtained in previous UPS Teamsters contracts, and existing part-time workers will receive a 48% average total wage increase over the next five years, which is huge. Wage increases for full-timers will keep UPS Teamsters the highest paid delivery drivers in the nation, improving their average top rate to a whopping, that's not in the article, that's my editorial comment, (laughs) $49 an hour. Uh, They go on uh, to list a whole bunch of other stuff that is a result of this contract. Again, I'm not going to go over all of that on this show, but if you'd like to read it, there will be a link available. They're creating new job opportunities no more forced overtime, an additional paid holiday, and so on. So there is a ton of stuff in this contract, and it is a big, big win for labor and for the Teamsters. And ultimately, it's going to be a big win for UPS because a happy workforce is a more productive workforce, and it's I, my expectation would be that this is going to be all good. The fate of the agreement now lies in the hands of the Teamsters membership. Coming up on July 31st, delegates from... The 176 UPS Teamster locals across the U.S. and Puerto Rico will convene for a crucial session to assess and endorse the proposed agreement. I wouldn't see any reason why they would not endorse this to their membership. Um, You never know how these things are going to go, but it seems like a pretty good deal. This means that all UPS rank and file members will be provided with a comprehensive list of these enhancements as outlined in the contract. Subsequently to that, Individual locals will organize member meetings, allowing members ample time to cast their votes electronically. The voting process will kick off on August 3rd and conclude on August 22nd. Assuming that the rank and file vote in favor of this contract and it passes, obviously the strike is averted. If by some chance this agreement is not satisfactory to the rank and file and they vote this thing down, then... They will go back to the negotiating table at the end of August, and I suppose potentially sometime in the fall, another strike would potentially be probable. I, again, for my part, sitting here in my basement, don't see any reason why the rank and file would not go ahead and ratify this deal. It looks like a sweetheart of a deal. Uh, I wish I could figure out a way to get myself uh, that kind of raise. (laughs) Uh, But good on them and uh, good on UPS for recognizing the value of their workers and uh, stepping up to the plate and making the commitment to make this thing happen. The last thing in this midweek update, uh, the United States Postal Service. This is kind of a weird one. They are no longer going to back Priority Mail Express guarantees with postage refunds for packages that miss the promised deadline to addresses in Alaska and Hawaii. Now, I don't know many resellers that ship much stuff by Priority Mail Express. The reason I bring this up, number one, is because it's another decline in service and in service guarantees from the post office, which has unfortunately been a trend with them. But this could domino into other things. I've noticed in my own case that shipping times to Alaska and to Hawaii seem to be extending a significant amount. And uh, this just does not, it gives me a funny feeling (laughs) if I'm being completely honest. Uh, It will continue to allow shippers to request postage refunds for lost Packages. The post office announced this on July 24th, effective on August 1st. The Postal Service is suspending guaranteed service for Priority Mail Express pieces destined to or originating from Alaska and or Hawaii. Refund requests for postage will only be processed for loss on Priority Mail Express pieces destined to or originated from Alaska to Hawaii. So if you're shipping Within those states, those will still be covered. But if you're shipping from one of those states to the lower 48 or vice versa, they're no longer going to cover that. So it's just one, to me, it's just one of those slippery slope things that it's another indication of 
paying for a service with the United States Postal Service that uh, they no longer deliver fully on. You can let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. If you're listening to the podcast, you can, of course, always email me at galaxycds at gmail.com or you can DM me over at Instagram at galaxycdsrocks. So that's just a quick 15-odd minute episode, but I thought the eBay quarterly results were important and obviously the UPS Teamsters agreement is really, really good news that the strike was going to be next week. So waiting until next week to talk about that would kind of take the air out of that story. So I decided to go ahead and give you guys a quick update on those two news stories. Please let me know what you think of any of that. If you found this informative, useful, helpful, if you're watching on YouTube, as always, do me a favor and whack that thumbs up button. If you're not fully subscribed to the podcast here on YouTube or a follower on the podcast platform of your choosing, please consider doing that as well and share this with your like-minded reselling friends. With that, my friends, uh, I'm going to go do some listing. (laughs) Have a good day, everybody. You have been listening to the Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you again next time.